Okay. So happy Wednesday, asynchronous day. So we're going to go over vectors and vectors can be shown as arrows. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So uh, position, motion, distance versus displacement, scalar versus vector. To understand the quantities that describe motion to prepare for the studying of velocity and acceleration. How we're going to use our notes, assignments, readings, and then we're going to work it in either Nearpod or Pear Deck. Overview, motion, distance and displacement, scalar and vector. I'm sitting down, so I'm not moving right now. So as a review, everything in the universe is moving, accelerating through space at tremendous speeds. Motion is equal to the process of an object changing position from one location to another. Position equals the location of the object within a physical frame of reference. Frame of reference, set of points or objects used to determine the relative motion, like a coordinate plane. So distance versus displacement. Distance is the length of the actual pathway taken between two points. So that's in blue. So if we started at one, that's a reference point. Go around until we end up at two. Now the displacement is a length, a straight line between two points. So just from the initial point to the ending point. So we want to do displacement from time to time. Um, and remember, that's a vector quantity. Which color represents the distance? All right, so the color that represents the distance here is blue. I'm writing in red though. I could write in blue. B L V. What represents the displacement? Let's go back to red. R E D. So distance versus displacement. Let's say you go west of five meters, north one meter, west. So we start here. So we can call that like X1, X initial, I'm sorry, XI. Start there, go five meters, go north one meter, and then east five meters, finish. What's the distance? So five plus one plus five, 11 meters. What's the displacement? So it's just this distance in here. The displacement is one meter, and that's going to be where we ended up to where we started. So the start point's going to be, so our start point's going to be, um, sorry, our ending point's going to be north of where we started. So go north three meters, start, west five meters, south three meters, and east five meters. What's my distance? Okay, so I add those up, three plus five plus three plus five, 10, 16 meters. That's my distance, and that's a scalar, remember, S-C-A-L-A-R. No, dist no um, direction. So that's my distance and my displacement. Is zero. Because I ended up right where I, I began. And I don't have to put a direction on that because I'm back at the start. You go north three meters, west five meters, three meters, and then five. So we had that we've done. The, oh, I see. I did. I did both the same same one. Can you, you can the distance ever be greater than the displacement? Well, yeah, sure. If I if I look at a baseball diamond, here's home plate. So if I get to third base, and these are 90 feet 
each, I'm at 270 feet. But my starting point is home base to third base. It's only 90 feet. So yes, the distance can be greater than displacement. Um, the displacement can also be zero, right? Zero. Can the distance and displacement ever be the same? Sure. Look at the baseball diamond. Oops, not a very good baseball diamond. So first base is here. Second here, third. So if I go to first base, the distance is equal to 90 feet, and the displacement start to first base is 90 feet. Scalar versus vector quantities. Scalar quantities must be measurable, and the number or magnitudes is, is the size or the number. Scalar quantities are involve only magnitude, so only numbers. You can have units on the end of that. Vector quantities have magnitude and direction, so left, right, up, down, west, and even negative numbers, negative, and positive can be also used for our direction. What's something that would be a scalar quantity? Okay, so speed, 60 miles an hour. No direction in that one. What's something that is a vector quantity? So vectors could be also 60. My velocity is 60. Erase this. Velocity is the speed with the direction. All right, so 60 meters per second west or to the left. Or forward, you can even say that, forward. Example of magnitude, speed, weight. Nope, weight is not a not one. We're gonna we have speed, age, temperature, distance. Vector, both magnitude and direction, represented by arrows in a specific direction. Length of the arrow represents how big it is or the magnitude. Examples, velocity, force, acceleration, momentum, displacement, 55 miles per hour north is a, a vector. So which of these vectors is the greater? So this one is right here. It's longer, so that represents a greater magnitude. So we can add vectors together, line them up tip to tail. The sum of the new vector is from the last one. So here is my new vector would be something this large. So this is adding the vectors. Add these two vectors together. So they're going in opposite directions, so we subtract. And I'll show you how to do that. You can put numbers on the uh, uh, to the magnitude two and add uh, subtract values. So think of it like a number line, positive and negative. So here you're adding these two together. Three plus five gives you eight. All right. If we're subtracting them, then we can kind of superimpose the end here, and then the arrow here, and then we've got whatever is left, we get two. So those will be important when we're talking about motion and friction. So 
Uh, we have a frictional force that's um, going in the opposite direction of the force we're sliding, and the overall force becomes 2. Add these three vectors. So we can add these two together. 9 plus 15 gives us 24. And then this one's going in the opposite direction. So we're going to subtract 3 gives us 21. Vector addition can be complicated. So it's, it's tail to tip, tip to tail. So what they've done, move these around so that the, we have the three. The one that's in um, green that's not shaded is the resulting one. Okay, so when we're adding these together, and this this is the the amount of force, let's say, in this direction, this is the downward force, and then there's an upward force. So when we put them all tip to tail together, we can put the resulting one and where we started from, and this is our eventual. And what this actually shows, if we have these types of forces, when we're connected together, our resulting force goes in this direction. So um, it's really interesting when we get to, into forces, we'll be talking more about that. So if we added these together, then we would have, we slide this one over here. See if we were to do that one like that, then we could do this one like that and then this one like that so we could have our resulting one be this direction and that length all right so vocabulary review motion position distance displacement Quantity, magnitude, scalar, and vector. So what's the difference between distance and displacement? So displacement is a linear or a line between the start and end of, end of the point of on a trip. And the distance is the total total around the object. So if I have a box right here, and I go A to D, A, B, C, D. So the distance would be here, A to B to C to D. So if this was 5 and this was 3, that was 5. We'd have 13. But my displacement is just A to D. And that would be three units, and it's south. So that's the difference between those two. Is displacement a scalar or a vector? So that's a displacement's a vector because of direction. All right. So that is it for this video.